Okay, today we're going to learn about monks. No, not actually. It's just freezing in my house today. I don't know why. All right, today we're going to learn about combinations of resources. This is screencast number three. So up to this point, we've looked at like one resource, like workers, and we talked about MRP and MRC and when, whether we'd hire a certain amount of resources. But what if there's a variety of resources that a business could use to produce? Like maybe it could use labor, or maybe it could use capital, or maybe it could use a combination of the two. How does a business know which resources to use and in what amounts and in what combinations? Well, we're going to come across two rules, and that's really the focus of this screencast, understanding these rules and how to apply them. The first one's called the least cost rule, and the second one is called the profit maximizing rule. We're going to start with the least cost rule. Firms would use this rule if the firm has a certain quantity to produce. So it gets an order for a certain amount of goods, um, and it wants to produce those goods in the least possible cost way. So applying this rule will enable a firm to choose the combination of resources that would produce that quantity, again, in the least cost possible, least possible cost way. So we're going to go through an example. Let's say that we have a firm that produces buttons, because I couldn't think of something else. And let's say it has an order to produce a thousand buttons. Now assume that the firm could either use workers to make the buttons, or it could use machines to make the buttons, or assume that it could use a combination of the two. So let's say that it's hired workers, and here it has a bunch of workers. And let's say it's also hired a bunch of machines, robots, that's capital. We're going to focus on the very last ones that were hired. So behind them, there's all these other workers and robots, but we're going to focus again on the last worker hired and that last robot purchased. Now let's say that the marginal product of the last worker hired was 12 buttons. That last worker that came to work made 12 additional buttons for us. And let's say that the marginal product of the capital, that last robot we bought, <clears throat> was 200 buttons. Now remember, marginal product would change as we hired more or less of these things because of the law of diminishing marginal returns. Now let's say we also knew the cost of each of these resources. Let's say that the price of labor was $6 and the price of the machine was $10. Now if I asked you to look at these two options, the worker and the machine, and I asked you which was a better deal, I think you would pretty, come to, uh, pretty quickly come to the conclusion that the robot is a better deal. And if you came to that conclusion, there is a little math that went on in your head whether you know it or not. Think about the worker. That worker made 12 buttons and it cost $6 to hire that worker. So essentially it cost us $6 to make 12 buttons with that worker. In other words, the calculation you did in your head, probably, without maybe even knowing it, was that you took the marginal product of that worker, 12 buttons, and you divided it by the price of that worker, which was 6, and what you got was the number 2. In other words, that worker is making 2 buttons for every dollar that you spent on that worker. You could think of that as the bang for the buck from that worker, and at this point, things might start to seem kind of sim uh, similar or familiar to something we did a long time ago in terms of how consumers choose products. How consumers choose between two products is very similar to how a business chooses between two resources. Now in terms of the robot, the robot cost us $10 to buy and made 200 buttons for us. So if you take those 200 buttons and divide them by the $10 for the cost of the robot, you get 20, which is essentially the bang for the buck from the robot. That robot's making 20 buttons per dollar that you spend on that robot. So if this was the situation you were in, if you were a smart business owner, you should probably have more robots and less workers. The robots are producing more buttons per dollar that you spend on them. They're a better deal. So finally, we come to the least cost rule, and we'll see how this rule applies. The rule says that resources should be used in such a way so that for the last of each kind of resource you use, the marginal product of that resource divided by the price of that resource should be equal to the marginal product divided by the price of the other kind of resource. 
In other words, in English, you want the bang for the buck from each kind of resource you use to be equal. Because if they're not equal, you should probably be focusing on the thing that gives you more bang for the buck. And here's what's going to help you answer AP questions. Let's say the marginal product of labor divided by the price of labor, the bang for the buck of workers, was greater than the bang for the buck of capital. In that case, we would want to use more labor and less capital. In other words, if your fraction is greater, you want more of that thing. If the marginal product of labor divided by the price of labor was less than the bang for the buck, or marginal product of capital divided by price of capital of the machines, which was the situation that we just saw, we would want less labor and more capital. Bottom line, the bigger the fraction, or whichever fraction is bigger, that's what you want more of as a business owner. So let's go back to our little example. Again, the bang for the buck for the last worker was two buttons per dollar. The bang for the buck from the last machine we used was 20 buttons per dollar. Obviously, the fractions aren't equal. We're going to want more robots and less workers. And the way we're going to satisfy the rule is to do exactly that. Because if we hire another robot, or if we buy another robot, the marginal product of that next robot isn't going to be as high as the one that came before. Here's the one that came before, marginal product of 200. We buy another one smaller marginal product. Why? The law of diminishing marginal returns. Remember that as we continue to use resources, the marginal product of those resources will eventually drop because they start getting less effective, the more crowded, the more of them we have, etc. So notice that when marginal product of that next robot goes down, the bang for the buck also goes down. Now the bang for the buck from this robot is only 18 buttons per dollar. It's going to work the same way with uh, the workers, but this time in reverse, because we're going to have less workers. So as we get rid of that worker, and we talk about the worker that came before, the worker that came before's marginal product should be higher, because again, as we add workers, sorry, as we add workers, marginal product drops, law of diminishing marginal returns. So this worker that we're getting rid of had a marginal product of 12, the worker that came before might have had a marginal product of 18. Again, that's going to change the bang for the buck of that worker. Bang for that buck of the worker is three buttons per dollar, higher than it was before. And the idea is that the law of diminishing marginal returns, if we keep along with this process, is eventually going to even things out. So as we continue to buy robots and continue to get rid of workers, those fractions are eventually going to start to approach one another. Let's keep on adding workers and keep on getting rid of, I'm sorry, keep on adding robots and keep on getting rid of workers. So more robots now, less workers. Eventually, we're going to finally buy a robot whose marginal product is going to be low enough such that the bang for the buck is going to be going down. And as we keep on getting rid of these workers, marginal product is going to rise until we get to a point where the marginal product divided by the price, the bang for the buck, is equal. In this case, we've finally gotten to a worker whose bang for the buck is equal to the robot that we finally purchased. That's where we want to be. That's the perfect combination of resources if we want to produce things in the least cost way. Notice that the MP divided by P of workers is equal to 10. The MP divided by P of capital is also equal to 10. That's perfect. Okay, the second rule is called the profit maximizing rule. And this one takes a little algebraic uh, reformulation to totally understand, but it's not that complicated. We're going to use this rule if the firm can produce any quantity it wants. So it's not trying to produce any specific quantity and is simply seeking to maximize its profit. Now, satisfying this rule will automatically satisfy the least cost rule. It's impossible to profit maximize without doing things in the least cost way. But know that the converse isn't true. If you're satisfying the least cost rule, you're not necessarily satisfying the profit maximizing rule. So we're going to take another example. Let's say a firm that produces buttons uh, is trying to decide how many workers and robots to use, and it could produce any amount of buttons that it wants to. And again, we're going to assume that the firm could use either workers to make the buttons, robots to make the buttons, or a combination of the two. 
So going back to our little example, we have workers in our factory and we have robots or capital in our factory. And again, we're going to focus on the very last worker and robot used. Going back to the same example of last time, let's say that these are their marginal products and these are what it costs to hire each of these kinds of resources. And now we're going to add one additional piece of information um, in a second. Um, but before that, um, I want you to recognize that the price of the labor or the price of the capital, PL or PC, is really just their marginal resource cost, what it adds to your cost to use a worker or capital. So we're going to equate price of labor to the marginal resource cost of labor and the price of capital to the marginal resource cost of capital. Okay, the little piece of information we're going to add is the actual product price. Again, they're making buttons, and I found this button, and I'm still thinking about this button. Um, yeah, anyway, let's say that the buttons sell for a price of $6, and let's just say, say we're operating in a perfectly competitive product market so that that price of $6 would not change no matter how much we produced. We can calculate the MRP of each of these resources now. Again, you take the marginal product of 12 times the price of the product of 6, $72 for the worker. That's what this worker is going to add, um, the amount of money this worker is going to add to my cash register. We could do the same thing for capital. Take the marginal product of 200 times the price of the product of $6. The MRP of this robot is $1,200. Alright, so far so good. Now remember the rule. The rule says that if you want to maximize your profit, keep on hiring a resource as long as MRP is greater than or equal to MRC, and ideally you want to go to the point where they're equal. Well obviously in this situation we're not at the point where those things are equal. This worker is bringing in $72 and it's only costing $6 to hire. The machine's bringing in $1,200 and is only costing $10 to buy. All right, so here's our rule. Keep on going until MRP is equal to MRC. Now, MRP um, being equal to MRC is the rule. And remember that MRC is just another way to say the price of that resource. So I'm going to erase MRC and simply replace that with price. So we can restate our rule as going to the point where the MRP of, let's say, labor is equal to the price of labor. Now if we do a little division, if we divide both sides of this equation by the price of labor, we would get something that looks like this. We want to keep on hiring workers up to the point where the MRP of labor divided by the price of labor is equal to 1, which is really just an algebraic reformulation of our basic rule, MRP is equal to MRC. Now we want that to be true for labor, but we also want that to be true for every other resource that we use. As a result of that, we can have one formula for all resources in terms of profit maximization. And here it is. Profit maximizing rule says that you want to use resources such that the MRP of labor divided by the price of labor is equal to the MRP of capital divided by the price of capital is equal to the MRP of whatever resource divided by the price of that resource, which is equal to one. What this rule is essentially saying is we want MRP to be equal to MRC for every single resource that we use. Again, it's nothing other than a restatement of our basic profit maximizing rule in terms of hiring resources. All right, so let's go back to our example. Here, MRP is not equal to MRC. The MRP of labor is not equal to the price of labor. The MRP of capital is not equal to the price of capital. If that's the case, we don't have the right amount of workers and we don't have the right amount of machines. And since MRP is greater than MRC, we want to keep going. We want to hire more workers and we want to hire more machines. If we hire more machines, we should start to see MRP drop. Again, the law of diminishing marginal returns. That next machine isn't going to produce as many buttons. As a result of that, their MRC isn't going to be as high. The next machine might make 180 buttons, and again, multiplying that by the price of the product, $6, the MRP of that next machine might be 1080, as opposed to the, work of the machine that came before, whose MRP was 1200. 
The same thing is going to be true for workers. The next worker is going to have a lower marginal product, the law of diminishing marginal returns. And as a result of that, the next worker's MRP is also going to be lower. If that next worker makes only 10 buttons compared to 12 buttons that was the previous worker was making, MRP is going to be 10 times $6, the price of the product, or $60. Still, MRP is not equal to MRC, and so we should keep going with both kinds of resources. The law of diminishing marginal returns, just like in the least cost rule, is eventually going to make things even out. So as we keep on hiring lots more robots, eventually we're going to get to a robot whose marginal product is so low such that when we multiply that by the price of the product, it's going to be equal to the MRP of that worker. I'm sorry, the MRC of that worker. Here for this last robot we hired, its MRP is $10, 1.67 times $6, the price of the product. The cost of that robot was $10 we're finally up to the right amount of robots. Same deal with the workers. Keep on hiring more workers, and eventually we're gonna to get to a worker whose marginal product is low enough, such that when we take the marginal product of one button in this case and multiply it by the price of the product, $6, now we've gotten to a worker whose marginal revenue product is equal to what it costs to hire that worker. And again, we're at the perfect combination of workers and robots. All right, that one might take a time or two to go through, but I think you'll get it. See you next time. Honey, or let's go play. I don't feel like it. Why are you always in such a bad mood? I have a nail in my anus. Oh.